it's my birthday. Wow! And this year I'm celebrating it a little bit um, unusually, celebrating in inverted commas. Uh, I was having a discussion with someone the other night, a very lengthy discussion, and um, she has ADHD. And uh, after a very lengthy discussion, five hours or so, it became quite possible that I myself have ADHD or someplace, something resembling it. Um, I've since gone down the rabbit hole, which apparently is a very ADHD thing to do, and um, started looking at symptoms of ADHD. And I will say it's very important that you don't self-diagnose, which I have to try and stay away from that temptation. But um, one of the things, and I think I have to be very, I want to be very, very careful because I think there's a temptation with the neurodivergent community as a whole, let's say, to view neurotypical people as being boring and uh, in a very dismissive way. And I've always kind of thought that for myself, the worst insult you could use on me is to call me normal or typical. So that might be a sign. But um, I think you have to be very careful when a label gives you a sense of significance or importance, particularly if you're going to call neurotypical people boring then inherently you're taking some pride from the neurodivergent label and then that might short circuit your recovery or your coping mechanisms. So, but one of the one of the things that I, a YouTube video I was watching the other day in terms of signs that you might have adult ADHD. Now you might, I don't have, I wasn't hyperactive as a child and quite frankly, I was probably the opposite. And, um, as a tennis coach, when I was just beginning, I I had this stereotype in my head of someone who had ADHD was a child who'd had too much red sugar running around out of control. And it turns out that can be that can be the hyperactive part of it, but there are other forms of it of ADHD that are much more subtle, harder to detect, and more so there's more ways of ADHD manifesting than simply someone who can't sit still and can't pay attention. Um, but they said, this video said that one of the things that might be a clue is that you've always felt different. Now, again, you can look at some of these things and go, well, doesn't everyone feel different at times? And yes, that's certainly the case. But I certainly have always felt very, very different. I've always thought that I thought differently. And I think going back to last year, or was it the year before when I interviewed... Um, Miss Earth Denmark, Cecily Dissing, who has, if I'm not mistaken, ADHD, Asperger's and synesthesia. And uh, we had this really long interview, which was a very winding interview, which I don't think many people would have been able to follow. And then we had a very long discussion afterwards. And um, she brought up this idea of hyper focus. And I'd never heard of that until this point. Remember, as I said, my idea of ADHD was someone who can't pay attention. Well, it turns out the flip side of that is hyperfocus, which means that when someone who has ADHD finds something interesting, they can lose hours and days of their lives into it, and you can't break their con but you can't break their concentration. I heard a story. I don't know if it's true or not, but there was this person who was in a state of hyperfocus, and um, her house was on fire around her, and she didn't realize until the firefighters broke down the door. Uh, that that to give you an idea, that's the flip side of ADHD is this hyper focused state. But long story short, getting to speak to someone like Cecily, who definitely is part of the neurodivergent community, and I thought, wow, this person is not weird. It was quite the opposite. This person thinks like me, and there were one or two very scare, at least one or two very scary not scary, but eerie parallels when Cecily would say that she thought a certain way and I would just immediately think, hang on, that's that's the way that I think. And yet you're part of the neurodivergent community. And then, of course, you know, the wheels begin to turn very quickly <laughs> in, in, in my case. And I know I, I had a friend who I hadn't heard from in a while. I think I put up on Twitter just a kind of a throwaway post saying that I think I might be part of the neurodivergent community, or I might be a little bit different, let's say. And um, she replied like, yeah, obviously, what this is kind of like a surprise to you. So, I mean, it's always kind of obvious to other people, perhaps before it's obvious to ourselves. But I was watching another YouTube video, as I said, I went down the rabbit hole, 
and because um, I'm getting my dopamine fix <laughs> and I saw that another defining factor of adult ADHD remember I'm not hyperactive by any stretch of the ima imagination but that you do very well in sort of primary school early school you might begin to struggle a little bit in secondary school because your raw the raw intelligence can't just carry you through that you do need to do more study and then the wheels can kind of fall off in university when not only do you really have to study because knowledge and is not so much common sense but also there's a lot less structure and apparently that's one thing that adhd people really do need is some semblance of a structure otherwise they and you can tell me if this resonates with you at all they procrastinate until the night before and also the other thing is they have difficulty prioritizing what order to do things in and even setting goals in the first place and this is something that's always sort of bugged me is that i'm very good at helping other people set goals but when it comes to myself i don't know what to set it it almost seems anathema to me to even set goals in the first place because there's so many things i want to do and again another sign that you might have adhd is that you have a lot of things going on and none of them are finished and you know again you don't want to self-diagnose after watching a few of these videos and talking to a couple of people for a very long time um after a while you see so many things that you go hang on that's me that's me that's me that's me and you begin to wonder now the the reason i'm telling you this is one of the things that i think it's difficult to tell whether you have adhd or a dopamine dysregulation something wrong with you the normal dopamine pathways and the reason i say this is because if you have an addiction to anything um social media let's say is a very easy a very prominent one or video games um, what happens is it hijacks your dopamine system. Your dopamine system is kind of the thing that lets you know, hey, keep doing what you're doing because this is on this is on the path to something that you want, which is why goal setting is important because goal setting literally helps you determine, yes, this is something that I should be doing because it's going to lead me to a goal, which is why not being able to set goals is a big problem. But if you become addicted to something, your dopamine becomes very, very dysregulated. And if you have a huge dopamine spike from something such as playing a video game, or even worse, if you stack dopaminergic activities, for example, if you have a coffee, you have a cold shower, you do an intense workout, you listen to a pumping soundtrack, and then you go and play video games, you have a massive dopamine spike, but everything that goes up must come down. You then have a massive dopamine crash and then you go down, not back to baseline, but way below baseline. And you start, well, you can imagine, it becomes very, very erratic. And when you are in a state of low dopamine, basically you find it, I mean, there's many other things and I'm by no means an expert, but you would find it very, very difficult to do anything that you didn't really want to do because you lack the motivation. And that's one of the, again, another telltale sign of ADHD is is that it's not just difficult for them to do something they don't want to do they find it pretty much impossible and that's certainly been the case for me one of the issues that I've had is doing something once it becomes in my mind boring um wh wh when it's interesting when it's a problem to solve I've it's got my attention but as soon as I kind of solve that issue in my head and once it becomes sort of routine or you just need to do it consistently there's not much to solve you just need to do it it then becomes very mundane and boring and i've found it very very difficult to apply myself in that area now you might looking from the outside i don't know how well you know me but a lot of people will look at what i've done particularly with a pageant project that's probably how you know me and go but you've achieved all this stuff um so you can't possibly have an issue following through what well, the thing is and this came to light the other night when I was speaking to this person was sometimes the stuff you achieve when you have ADHD is stuff you achieve whilst you should have been achieving something else. And again, if that sounds completely foreign to you, I'm glad, for, I'm happy for you because it probably means you don't have ADHD, but this resonates with you. Like you should have been doing your uni assignment and yet you somehow learned a new skill. That seems to be another telltale sign of ADHD. And 
the classic example for me, I mean, there's two that comes to mind. One in the pageant space, which is Confessions of a Pageant Queen. Now, if you don't know, I released that late 2020. It is 1,600 pages long. 1,600 pages long. The longest book you can publish on Amazon is 800 pages. So we needed to break it up into two volumes. 1,600 pages, and I turned that around in just over two weeks. That is a definition of hyperfocus. I remember not eating much, like I'd work the whole day and then realize, crap, it's 10.30 at night and I haven't eaten. I'm still in my pajamas, I haven't brushed my teeth. That's hyperfocus for you. And apparently that, that level of productivity is not normal. I don't know because when it's your brain, that's the only brain you've ever had. How would you know? And this is one of the difficulties and I think realizing something, might you might need some sort of help is how would I know that's not normal because that's the way I think. It's not like I've had another brain that I can compare it with. But I needed to be told, apparently, finishing publishing a 1600 to 800 page books in two weeks is not normal. Good to know. The other thing that's not related to pageantry is actually tennis. I um, was a tennis coach and played tennis at quite a high level. But the thing a lot of people don't know is I taught myself. And I taught myself to a much higher standard than I think any coach could have because it was my dopamine fix. I loved tennis, I still love tennis. And to give you an idea, I mean, I had, I got, I had a ball machine, I got this camera software, I got this high speed video analysis software, which back in the day was thousands of dollars. And I would videotape myself hitting the same shot over and over and over again. And I would be comparing it to these freeze frames of the best players in the world. I'm doing that again and again and again until I got it right. And I'd wonder, okay, which parts are the important parts of hitting a good shot? Is it where their feet are? Is it where their hips are? Is it where the racket is? And I'd figure that out. And even thinking back to then, if I would tell people what I was doing, a lot of people would be blown away by it. But I think that's because I thought they would never do that. And I'm kind of realizing this now to them, it would be too much effort. But for me... Again, it was that hyper-focus over a longer period of time. I was getting my dopamine fixed from that. And even back, even after I'd sort of learned to a reasonably high level, I could play tennis. And still to this day, I can play tennis for hours on end and not need to come off the court. I remember having to go through two or three hitting partners, like pretty high-level players. I would go through two or three of them in a row, and I'd still want to go more because I loved it so much, whereas they were tired and they wanted to throw in the towel. So... The All these sorts of things have sort of made me come to realize that even if it's not ADHD, and part of this is going to be, do I go to see a doctor or not? And in this case, it's probably seeing a general practitioner to get a referral to a psychiatrist, one who specifically specializes in adult ADHD, because apparently, you know, it's not, it's not that sort of a commonly understood um, condition that you just want to go to any psychiatrist because it could be quite possible you go to a psychiatrist and says well you're not fidgeting you don't have ADHD go away and you obviously you want to see someone who has knowledge of adult ADHD but at the same time as I said there's a danger if that label because it kind of makes you feel important you want to be diagnosed with it and so I, I need to tread that li tread that line but the next step probably involves going to see a, a doctor of some kind but also, I need to sort of not go on a dopamine cleanse, although that's a very popular thing to say in this day and age. But um, I need to look at at least trying to repair, to some extent, my dopamine, restore my natural dopamine patterns. And a lot of that is going to come from stepping away from addictions. And social media, for me, is one of those. And um, also with pageantry, like the reason I've been doing interviews for so long and interviewed hundreds of people... That, for me, is also a dopamine fix. And you say, why? Why? How are you addicted to interviewing? Well, it's because everyone you meet, and I said this the other night, everyone you meet is kind of a puzzle to be solved, at least in my head. And I know that might sound weird or horrible, but it's just me being honest. It's the way that my brain works. Like Everyone I meet, they're fascinating to me. Well, most people are fascinating to me in some way, not everyone. Um but, I mean, as I said, like you wouldn't probably be able to tell that sometimes my attention wanders, but it does. Um, but that's why I've been able to do it so long. Like, as other things have come and gone, the interviewing and meeting people from around the world, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart because I find it really interesting and fascinating. So it's easy for me to do. 
but, and this is a big but, there are things that are going, sort of sliding, um, that I need to pay attention to. One is my um, content creation business, for example. The other thing is I am starting, I'm in the process of starting a, a business built around AI and reviewing that and um, coming up, you know, creating content around that tailored more towards business people and entrepreneurs. So I need to sort of step away from the easy dopamine fix in order to be able to address some of the things that hopefully will give me in, at some point the dopamine back that I've been, that I would miss from doing interviews. But my point is when you have an addiction, your dopamine goes out of whack and it can be very difficult to know what to do, what order to do it in that prioritization. And you can avoid doing the things you know you should do because you just your brain forces you to do, do the thing that's going to give you the dopamine, in this case, the pageant interviews. And I think that's one of the things that really, really struck me is that people with a dysregulated dopamine system, it, it doesn't matter how much willpower you have, you just can't follow through. Someone, another video I saw the other day, it said the classic summation is people with ADHD, you know what to do and you just don't do it. And again, that could apply to a lot of people. But when you start looking at all the symptoms in their totality and you go, hang on, like 95% of them are me. And I thought, that's only me who does that. And, but hang on, other people think like this. Maybe there's, you know, maybe there's some, some people who are like me. Uh, so long story short, that's going to be a journey that I'm going to go on in some way. I won't lie. It is a bit daunting thinking about going to a doctor, seeing a psychiatrist, potentially going on medication, but I think the payoff would be worth it because if there's one thing I know about success in life, and I'm sure you know this, it's not just momentary inspiration. It's not just raw talent. You need consistency. Everyone who's achieved anything will tell you about the value of hard work and consistency and doing doing things even when you don't feel like it. And it's people with a dopamine dysregulation or ADHD, that is the one thing they can't do, is doing things when they don't feel like it. And rather than judging myself for having a lack of willpower or lack of discipline and being quite envious, frankly, of people who just seem to be able to do the mundane tasks again and again and again, and it's no issue for them, maybe this goes some way to explaining that. And that's why I've decided, okay, I need to take this not more seriously, but this is now to the point where it's not just going to be a label, as I said, that I can take pride from. It may be a gateway to understanding some of the issues that I've been having over the years, particularly with completing things and doing things when I didn't really feel like doing it. Now, along those lines, um, I will be taking, uh, I will be slowing down on the interview front. I won't be aggressively pursuing new interviews anymore. I still have a few lined up and a few in the works, but taking a step back from that, because one of the things I did want to do was write a pageant book. And this one is going to be basically a pageant survival guide. One of the things I noticed is that over the last few years, probably since the pandemic ended, the viewership in terms of my interviews has gone down. Now, that's overall. I mean, for some interviews, it's still amazingly high. But then, in other, in other, on the whole, it's gone down and people tuning into the lives are going down. However, what I've also found is that there seems to be more interest, in, and I'm just taking this from the metrics. This is not just me thinking it. Uh, there seems to be more interest in, you guys seem to have more interest in getting sort of my insights or my advice on pageantry. And I appreciate that. And I can certainly understand that because you've seen how many people I've interacted with. And um, just remember for th every interview, there's a conversation that goes on after the interview. And that's where I've learned probably the most about pageantry. And I know probably more in the totality of pageantry than almost anyone out there because I'm not directly in it. So people will tell me everything. Everyone will tell me everything. And so it all goes into my brain. And again, the ADHD kind of loves that because it puts it all together into one cohesive web <laughs> in, in my head. For a lot of people, it would be very overwhelming. But apparently with ADHD, it's that what they call strategic thinking in Fortune 500 circles anyway. 
is that you get a whole bunch of information, but an ADHD person can say, that's what it is, or here's a problem. Um, and so a lot of you have expressed more of an interest into because you've watched more when I've been going on a rant about what I would like to see done differently in pageantry or rant about something that I think is wrong or even not just necessarily calling things out but pointing out when I think something is wrong with an eye to wanting to see something done about it. So I will and um, also I wanted the profits from this pageant survival guide to go towards a non-profit and Gracie if you're watching this now you know probably why it's taken a while to get onto the book is because of struggling with with this behind the scenes in terms of ADHD or demo, dopamine dysregulation, whatever it is. Um, easy to come up with an idea, difficult sometimes for me to see it through to completion. Uh, so if you're seeing a few less interviews or maybe just a few a bit less content or different content from me, that will be why. Um, and I I would love to hear from you. By the way, if you are part of the neurodivergent community, particularly if you have ADHD, I would love to hear some stories so that I know that I'm not crazy. Um, and I don't mind being crazy. Again, this might be a sign that I really do have ADHD, is that being labeled crazy doesn't bother me. Being labeled typical is more of an issue for me. But if you have stories, particularly of hyper-focus um, or, or stories of how you, medication stories or you know, what to look for in a psychiatrist, what not to look for. I, I saw one because this person I was talking to put me onto this um, channel, How to ADHD, and the How to HD person, who I think is, is quite famous now for this YouTube channel, was reading some um, feedback she'd been sent on her YouTube channel as to how people knew they had ADHD. And one of them that really resonated with me is that you won't, you can't be bothered with a conversation because it just doesn't interest you. And so you'd rather stay by yourself. Or you kind of know how the conversation is going to play out. So you just like, what's the point of contributing to it? Because this conversation is going nowhere interesting. And I'd rather keep reading my book or stay with my own thoughts. And I thought, wow, I think that probably every day on multiple occasions. And I'm not taking pride in this. It is just the way my brain works. If I see a conversation and it doesn't hold interest for me, I, I just rather not contribute to it at all. And sometimes I can completely ignore people. Again, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but it's just like, I don't feel like answering this because it's such a stupid conversation. Um, and again, it's difficult not to judge myself for that because I've been brought up and I do believe manners and respect are very important. So it's this really, as I said, it, it's an, going to be an interesting journey. And learning not to judge myself for it and maybe being able to accept parts of myself that certainly aren't perfect and for a self-confessed perfectionist. That is a difficult path to take, a difficult step to take. But I'm hopeful that some of you will resonate with this um, birthday message of mine. And I'm sure that a few of you out there are a little weird in the same way that I am. And um, I'd love to know, I mean, you don't have to comment publicly. If you want to send me a private DM, I'd, I'd love that too. But just if you think you might have something going on, or you know that you've been diagnosed with ADHD and you have a story to tell, and I'm not saying that, I'm not looking to set up an interview or anything like that. Maybe one day I will, an ADHD podcast or a neurodivergent podcast. I mean, I certainly had worse, I heard of worse ideas than that, but... Um, It'd just be nice to know how many people, how many of you out there have those same weird thoughts that I have and have a billion skills that you've picked up whilst you should have been doing something else. Like for me, I mean, apart from the tennis, I played violin since the age of two. Obviously, I know how to edit video. I'm into AI. I, I can program. I can code. I can design website. I really find marketing fascinating making money online the entrepreneurial space i love psychology um and like i, I just really and I, right now i want to learn how to put a car together one time i decided after watching gordon ramsay that i wanted to learn how to poach an egg and i poached 12 eggs in a row and then the other thing was once i learned how to poach an egg i had no interest in ever doing it again this, this is another thing apparently once you learn how to do something once you can do it it then loses all interest for you there's no dopamine then you can never do it again and that is another thing that went, 
crap, that's me too. Um, I mean, who poaches 12 eggs in a row? And again, it sounds stupid me saying this now, but you have to realize to me, it's just like, that's the way my brain has always worked. So I thought that was normal. And after this many conversations, I have slowly begun to realize that maybe, hey, it's not normal. So that's my birthday message to you. Um, I would love to connect with or hear from you if you have ADHD or some sort of other neurodivergent um, thing going on because uh, I'd like to see just how different brains work and even if you don't have ADHD but you resonate with some of what I've said it may be that you do have some sort of a dopamine regulation issue regulatory issue and maybe there is an addiction to social media or to your phone or to something it could even be a drug whatever it could be caffeine I don't know but I just like to know that and I'd like to offer you that you're not by yourself and that you're not crazy and that actually you might be crazy but in a good way and that there are other crazy people like you out there because the flip side the other thing the flip side is so beneficial as well like as I said I put out a 1600 page book I publish it in two weeks that is an amazing skill to be able to do and I don't think that's something that most neurotypical people could do because you'd be like, oh, I need to do this. And then by this month, then I'll do this. And then this month I'll do this. And then by this month I'll do this. Whereas for me, it was like, I'm going to do it two weeks later. I've done it. And then after that, I'm never doing that again. So that's my birthday message to you. Please reach out. I'd love to hear your stories. If this doesn't resonate with you, hey, I'm happy for you too. I don't like to view neurotypical people as boring. I will say, in all honesty, sometimes having conversations with people who speak really slowly is incredibly frustrating because um, my brain has just like gone 5,000 stops down the road and it forgets to come back sometimes. But um, also, if you see a bit less in the way of interviews um, and you see different content or less content or combination of both, that will be why. And also, I want to be working behind the scenes to get this book done because I really think this pageant survival guide is something that needs to be out there. Um, so yeah, that's my birthday message to y'all, as my Texan, my Southern friends would say. Have a good day, take care of yourselves, and I will see you later.